My name is Dennis John. We are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Tonight, we are going to be looking at fixing the labyrinth political structure. And we have four different distinguished personalities who are going to be sharing their views in discussing how we can fix our labyrinth political structure. Time and time again, we see that uh, we have presidents and there are issues, there are always opposition, and of course there should be. One thing that is clear is the system or the structure in which we are working, there seems to be something wrong with it. There's something that is not working. We go back to the days of President Tutman where there were issues and we often describe that time as uh, maybe the time of Sose, one Sose on, or uh, growth without development and the rest of it. We have other areas coming down to uh, Turbert, also to Taylor, President Sirleaf, and now President Weir. They are always issues. Most of the time we found that there are certain things that, that we propose as the solution to our problems. Sometimes there are people that say, well, LeBron needs a president that is strong like Jerry Rollins. Or we need a president like Prince Johnson. Or we need a president who knows it all. So there are all kinds of theories as regards fixing the issue once and for all. Because sometimes it gets so boring, it gets so tiresome. Changing one president after the other, one leadership after the other, and the issue is still the same. So tonight, we're going to be looking at our political structure. The uh, gentlemen I have invited today all agree that there is something that is not working that needs to be fixed. We have different ways of fixing it. And so tonight, I have Mr. Wilmot Cooney. Mr. Cooney, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Mr. Cooney, is joining us. Mr. Cooney is joining us from the city of Brotherly Love, Philadelphia, and he's the uh, executive director of the Labyrinth Diaspora Political Action Committee. We'll come to the view of Mr. Cooney on fixing the Labyrinth political structure. Next is uh, Dr. Barton Kula, a resident physician here in Metro Atlanta. Dr. Kula, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you for having me again. Look Great. forward to Great discussion on issues in Liberia. Great. Thanks. Uh, also joining us from the uh, from Minneapolis or the state of Ten Thousand Lakes, Mr. Austin Fala. Mr. Fala, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, Mr. Ja. Thank you. I cannot get on video or television because I'm driving just from work. So I'm happy that. Uh, I can uh, lend my own two cents and uh, a census to, uh, to this uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fala, and welcome to Focus on Liberia for yet another discussion. Last but not the least is uh, Mr. Alice Chuchu Jones. He's uh, the editor of the Business and Economic Forum on Focus on Liberia. Mr. Jones, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Well, thank you, Mr. Mr. Jai. Actually, last and the least. <laughs> A modest group of uh, fine and uh, brilliant uh, Liberians. So it's always a pleasure to discuss and talk about solutions rather than problems. So I, I think tonight will be one of those nights where a lot of different solutions will be brought, some new, some uh, far reaching, uh, and some of the normal uh, discussions that people have had over the years. So it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Mr. Jones. And uh, once again, we are going to discuss solutions tonight, solutions to fix a system that we believe is not working, that we believe is broken and needs to be fixed. So we have three different areas to fix the uh, political structure of Liberia. One is uh, decentralization, that's a view. And that view is being shared by Mr. Wilmont Cooney and Dr. Barton Kula saying that uh, we need to decentralize and the issue will be resolved. Number two on our list, Mr. Austin Fowler say the existing system can be, or the structure can be approved upon and he has various ways improving upon that system and he believe that will solve the problem. Then number three, Mr. Alex Chuchu Jones is saying, we don't need to have a president. We don't need to have a vice president. He has a solution and he believes with that is going to solve the problem. So 
we want all our viewers to join us. You're going to be posting your comments, questions on Facebook, and I'm going to be reading them. Want you to be a part of the solution tonight. I believe this is a great way for us to end 2019 for our Friday night debate. So I want to give each of you gentlemen a chance to uh, give us a brief introduction and where exactly you stand on fixing the like, <coughs> political structure. I start with you, Dr. Batam Kula. Well, Liberia has a myriad of problems um, as far as governance, good governance and structural and financial problems are concerned. A lot of us are thinking that, or at least I am thinking that the best way to go about solving some of these problems is to decentralize our government because there's so much power concentrated in one area and in one group of people, meaning there's so much power concentrated in one person, the imperial presidency, and in one county, Montserrat County, and in one city, Monrovia. Now, the UN and others have come in and helped us with a process of decentralization, wherein now we have the county service centers. So people don't have to come all the way to Monrovia to do everything, every little thing. There are costs associated with that. But I think where we have not really focused our attention in the last 12 years is to decentralize political governance in terms of electing our mayors, electing our superintendents and other municipal uh, governance structures. And I think it's incumbent upon us to focus more on that so that there's more power in the hands of our people, their monies that they pay in taxes are used in the areas that they pay those taxes to develop those those countries, I mean, develop those counties and those cities. Because for right now, what we're doing is we're putting all the monies in one pot, which is the central government account, consolidated account as they call it. And then the central government divvies it up, giving our counties uh, a little bit of money, which was quite recently instituted by Ellen Johnson Salif. But I think there's more to that, that that we need to look at. We need to focus more on it. And as, as we go on in the discussion, I think we'll talk a, a little bit more about what happened with Tudman, what happened with Talbert coming down to Ellen Johnson Salim and how we're trying now to decentralize and make our, our governance better than what it is, uh, and what it has been over the years. Thank, thank you. I'll now go to Mr. Raymond Cooney, who shares similar view and is the leader of the Labrin Diaspora Political Action Committee that actually runs on some of these things that we are talking, one of which being decentralization. Mr. Cooney. Uh, thank you, Dennis. And uh, thank you to my, to my fellow panelists uh, on this forum. Uh, I agree completely with uh, the view shared by Dr. Kula. And, uh, I just also want to pick it back on your introduction uh, where you indicated that we've had all of these leadership problems. You said from go back from the funding of the country. From the funding of the country, we have a system in our country that has produced all of these leaders. But for some reason, the problems of the people have not been resolved. In the recent past, as you correctly stated, we have President Tunman. After Tunman, we have President Talbot. At some point, the Liberian people said Talbot was not good. We killed the old man. We didn't change the system. We didn't do anything with the system. Sergeant Do came in. And we had all these promises as to how uh, progress and development will come to the country. After a while, we also killed Doe. The system was not changed. We didn't do anything with the system. We went through successive interim government and then we, uh, we ended up with Mr. Taylor as president in the same system. Couple of years later, war came about, Mr. Taylor is now sitting down in jail. At the end of that period, Again, the Liberian people, we didn't do anything with the system. Madame Salif came in. 
And it can be argued that maybe perhaps the only reason Madame Sally ended her term successfully could be that there was a strong international security presence in the country. After that, we have Mr. Weir. He's not even gone good three months and three years into his leadership, Liberians are glamoring for his removal. So the question for me is, we keep changing leaders, but we've not seriously asked ourselves the question, what is the system that is producing these leaders? Great. Thank you, Mr. Kone. And so that's it. so well, that, 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 is where, that is where we go. And for some of us, we think that the decentralization of governance, not only in terms of political power, but in terms of revenue power, in terms of financial power, is the best way for us to go. And that should be the next level of advocacy for Liberians. Thank you. The, uh, there was an experiment where there was a, this transmission, you know, this guy just graduated from the university with engineering degree. And when they put the, trans the transmission there, or the transformer. They were changing the transformer. Anytime they put it there, it blow off. They said, bring another one. They put it there, it blow off. Bring another one. What they did not realize was what was causing this transformer to blow off. As you correctly said, we keep changing the transformer, but using the same socket, and they keep blowing up. What's the problem? Let me hear from Mr. Austin Fala on the same issue. Your position is kind of a little bit in between everybody, Mr. Fala. How do we, what's your take on uh, what do we do to fix this structure? Hello, Mr. Fala. You hearing me? Okay, now I'm hearing you. Thank you very much, Mr. Jai, and thank you to all of my fellow panelists. Well, I, I feel that uh, we can improve upon what we have today. One, you notice librarians are now living in cages or in our country, living in cages, we build our houses, we have to put window bars and we live in cages. Why? The reason is because we are afraid of ourselves. Armed robbers are part of the society. They continue to loot and they go with impunity because the judicial system that we set up is now enforcing the laws that are passed by us. One, the, the, the legislature, the national legislature has to be given a specific terms of reference. Now they keep them there for, I think, nine years, six years. No, we should hire them for three months, January, February, March, after they pass the law, they are dissolved. They can only come back when there is a need. So we don't keep them paying them 16, 17, 20,000 dollars, we pay them per hour while they are there. If they get to understand that, that they are working and being paid by hour, like any other person, they will do the right thing because there will be no room for what they are doing, no corruption. There will be no room for corruption because they will be washed. Second, the judiciary system will put that in place so that there can be equal rights for everyone. But you have few people who will go to court and they are the offenders and they are the, 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 the one responsible for, for chaos, but they walk with impunity. Without those who the, are the victims receiving justice, the, just, the, 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 the judicial system can strengthen Liberia and make us straight, provided they will follow the rule of law. Like what is happening in this country? You can be who? Your status does not matter. As long as you are in violation of the law, you are punished. You are punished. So if we can go in and start electing judicial officials, those judges will start to elect them and give them a specific matter. When they misbehave, they can be fired by us. Now, when the president appoints them, because they will, they, will serve, they, they, they will serve in the interest of the president, as the constitution states. But when we elect them, they serve in our own interest. If not, we kick them out. We get them off our backs. That's how I see it, and that's how I think. My own two cents that we can spend in our country is to ensure that these lawmakers have a limited term of reference. I mean, three months. Pay you per hour while you are there. We ask you what to pass. Once you pass it, you are done. Like what happened in Minnesota. They have uh, senators and representatives who are there up to May. After May, they are done. They have no jobs. They 
can only come back if and only if they are called by the by the uh, by, by the governor to oh. perform tax. Thank you, Mr. Fala. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want to say welcome to Focus on Liberia. We are talking about fixing the issue that we all complain about year after year. What do we do? Let me hear from Mr. Ellis Chuchu Jones on his solution. Well, thank you again, uh, Dennis, and the rest of the panelists. Uh, again, these, were, these are all great ideas, and especially Mr. Fala, the idea of people coming in only when needed, and we we'll save a lot of money that we can use into put into schools, hospitals, and what have you, then paying somebody for absolutely doing nothing to improve the conditions of the people. So that was a very, very good point. Uh, I take a different view, um, and I'm happy that we have a physician on the line oh, yeah, in this debate tonight. If you have a cancer, you do not go and take antibiotic or you know, an uh, 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 aspirin, okay? You're gonna need chemotherapy or something much more uh, direct to solve that problem or you're gonna die. Liberia has a cancer, okay? And the cancer in Liberia is the presidency. The pres presidency in Liberia has caused almost all of the problems, all of the deaths, the civil war, what was the civil war about? People fighting over the presidency. Hey, few days from now, people are gonna go and march. And what what is what is that? One group of librarians see you. The presidency should this particular president shouldn't be there. I'm sure the president feels otherwise. Again, what's the issue? The issue they're not discussing or debating over schools, over healthcare, they're not marching over. Like doing businesses, like doing the marching with the presidency. And my thinking is, if you let the presidency go, there's nothing to fight about. And every Liberian now can go to the counties. They can they can be they can be useful. And the reason why are people fighting with the presidency? There's every reason for people to fight with the presidency. Because all these ideas that was mentioned tonight, none of them can be possible without the president's approval. We talk about the judicial system in Liberia. The president appoints every judge, magistrate, chief justice. We talk about mayors in Liberia. President appoints everything, and, and Dr. Kula, I think they mentioned that. Even if we had elected leaders in those counties, the fact that the budget and most of the major decisions in the country in terms of the law still have to go to one person. And lastly, I will start by saying, um, logic will tell you if you pay for something, you do not go and pay for Mercedes Benz and get a Honda Accord. If that brand, but if you look at that brand budget, you will find out that an overwhelming amount of the budget goes to the office of the presidency, either to the Ministry of State with the various organs of the Ministry of State. Look at where the president lives. Look at how the president travels. And I'm not talking about just George. We are going back on top one time. Okay? It would be fine with me. Pay, your, pay the president $1 billion if you want to. If that country has a high HDI, if that country is one of the best countries in the world, if the president is just like a corporate executive, a CEO makes according to how he performs. But can any Liberian tell me that what that Liberian president enjoys convoys and all these things. This man or woman is just like you and I. They have, there's nothing they've done for Liberia. They didn't, you know, they, they didn't fight a war against the imperialists or anything. They're just like you and I. Why should they receive all of these perks, mm -hmm. right? When in fact, they are, not, they, they are not getting anything in return. So I say get rid of it and let's- 30 seconds. All run the country. Yeah, so get rid of this, this presidency, and I, I have some ideas on how we can do it and what will replace it. When I say get rid of the presidency, I don't mean we will we'll not have leadership in the country. That would be naive to say that. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll, 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 come mean, you, we'll, we'll come back to you. We want to be conscious of time here. All right. Gentlemen, thank you for such beautiful intro into our topic tonight. We want to welcome our viewers across the globe. This is Focus on Liberia. 
and we are discussing solutions. We have some uh, educator intelligent and uh, professional librarians here that uh, we believe going to be dropping knowledge tonight. So let's go back to uh, Dr. Kula and what I want all, all of us to discuss now after you have presented what you want this to be is on the how, because how, how, do, we, how do we achieve what, you, what, what you're talking about? Because again, has a, let me go with Alex, that everything has to be decided by, as of now, by the president. So how do you intend to make this kind of change that you envision? Dr. Kula, I'll go back to you. Well, there's two things that all of us agree on. We agree that one, the president has too much power. He appoints all of the officials of government just about. Uh, I think last count, uh, somebody mentioned that the president has about 4,000 or more people that he appoints in government. That's too much power concentrated in the hands of one man. The other thing I see that we're talking about here is how the monies are divided up, how the budget is appropriated. And again, uh, Alex mentioned the fact that the president somehow, even if you had superintendents elected, somehow because the president uh, writes the budget and submits it to the legislators to pass it, that will affect that the, the ability for the uh, superintendent to be effective. But who says that the president has to write the budget? Even now as, as it exists, I don't understand why our legislators do not have a competing budget as is done here in the United States. We claim to follow the kind of governance that the United States have, but we don't seem to copy it in principle and in practice. So the how is simply this. The UN and others have done so much to put in various institutions, good governance and other institutions that are supposed to help decentralize our government. Taking away all of the power from this imperial presidency that was structured, I believe, by Tudman in the 1940s when Tudman realized that we had all this money to come from iron ore and rubber and other things, he concentrated the presidency around him. Now it's time that we slowly but methodically take away those powers that the presidents had. Like for example, I don't understand why up until now, we're still allowing the president to appoint the mayors. It was my understanding that the mayor should have been elected so that we can have an effective municipal government with its all, all of its structures all of its functions that takes away that power from the president having to control everything in the government. We've done a lot of work. The UN has documentation that they've studied. They put papers together about how we can decentralize our government, starting with the, uh, the uh, centers, the, the community centers or service centers that they have built, I believe 15 or more in the counties so far. And I might be wrong, but they've built several service centers around the counties and those service centers when i read the last document that was produced by the un between january to august the service centers i believe 11 of them had collected about five hundred thousand dollars us dollars from people doing things like marriage certificates and other things so not only do we need those service centers but we also need to have a budget structured in a way that each of those counties gets their share of the pie, of the pie uh, that they donate to our country in terms of minerals and other things. So again, two things, how one, let's decentralize the government, take away all of the powers that the president currently has to appoint 4,000 or more people. That way you weaken them, he doesn't control the government. He doesn't control the country as an imperial presidency anymore. And then two, you look at the finances of the country and structure our budget in such a way that the budgets go to the counties and those counties can then use it for their needs and their developmental needs and whatnot. That's how we do it. Thank you. M Mr. Cooney, on top of that, what I want to, you to start with is uh, what difference is this election going to make? For instance, as of today, we are electing representatives and senators. And see what we got in the House, <laughs> in the uh, legislature. 
So what difference is this electing mayors, electing superintendents? If the people, if people lack integrity, what difference is election going to make? So do that with the, uh, on top of the how. Okay, well, again, uh, uh, and I'm going to spend a little time on that because already we say that the system is bad. You use your socket example. This election not going to, it's, it's not going to make any difference because everyone that is going to be elected is going to be in the same system, the same rotting system, the same flawed system. It's going to be there. They're going to be, they, they will be implementing all of the policies, all of the laws of this system. So as to the how, and this is where the heavy weight lies. You see, as Liberians, we have to, to, to avoid this shortcut to things that we want. The tax at hand is very, very, is very, very important and it requires heavy lifting. This is why those of us in Lipac, one of our pillows is civic education, a training civic education so that people know you building consciousness so that people in the society know what it means to be a civil member of that society, what it means to have elections and what is the, the, the importance of your vote in the process. The how we come, I understand one of the panelists is saying that some of these things are achievable because you know the president would have a lot. And yes, the current system that's true. But we want to take away power from the president. And nobody expect the president the willingness to run a power. No politician has willingness to run a power. And this is where, why we are calling that people who are popular today, people who claim uh, 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 to popularity in this political process, we want to use the platform to affect some of these changes. Despite all of the limitations of the system, we're still in a democracy. We can change our constitution just by getting 10,000 voters that will put these things through referendum. You heard Dr. Kula talk about the US system. All these beautiful things have been drawn up, but nobody wants to implement them. The Governance Reform Commission, they also work on those things. Nobody wants to implement them. We need to change our constitution through people's power. Some of the things we want require people's power to do that. Some of these things, the power that we have, let us use it for referendum to elect people. The current system we have is a predatory system. Even the county centers that were set up, these things were like a colonial post, collecting money to carry to politicians in Monrovia. Nothing was left in the country. We're talking about a transformation of our institution that will ensure that not only political power is divided between the county and the regions, but economic power, concession agreements, it must be inscribed in the law. Taxation must be divided between our counties and our region. And the way to do that is for the two people to be conscientized, is for us to advocate, is for us to seek amendments of our laws. I mean, it's similar to what we did for multi-party democracy. Nobody was going to give Liberia multi-party democracy on a silver platter, but there was an enormous effort for consciousness building. And it led to political action that make us to achieve that. So now we have multi-party democracy. Our responsibility is to improve the quality of that democracy. Thank you, Mr. Kuni. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Fala, let me, let me go to you again. You, you were saying uh, like the, the, the current, the existing structure, the existing system. So people are walking away you know, with impunity. And the same question I asked Mr. Kuni. First, let me start with that. that uh, even the people we are electing not performing, you know, sometimes become integrity issue. So what kind of improvement on this current system is going to yield any different result? If we elect judges and the judges are, always, are also like the legislature we elect, what's going to be different? You see, if we elect judges, they are working at... Can, can you put your volume up a little bit? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. If we elect judges, the judges will be answerable directly to us and not to the, the presidency. I mean, the people. So if they, if they falter, we can remove them. But let me come. I love what uh, Dr. Kony said and what uh, Dr. Kula and, and Alex said. I love what they said. 
and you mentioned about the arrangement we have now, how it came about. And it came about because of interim arrangement. We fought, we went through all of these discussions, then we moved into what we call elections and we elected these people. I think the current leadership and those in the national legislature, if you try to suggest what I suggested to them, mm -hmm. they will not vote, they will not even pass it, they will not allow it to go through. Yeah. How do we do it? We have to revisit the current arrangement to see whether we can go back to an interim arrangement. Go back to an interim arrangement where all these things will be sorted out and go through a referendum or through ballot and we vote upon them and we pass them into law and we can enforce them. Because if we don't do that, we're waiting for Mr. Weir or, or this, the representative senators that we have in there to pass these things we're suggesting, it will never come to fruition. It will hmm. not come to fruition. It will never come to fruition because the guys feel that those positions are for them. They, it's their personal property. They feel that those positions are their personal properties. And whatever they say should be the fun. Look at what happened, like what we read on Front Page Africa, that they pay them $5,000 to do their job. Jesus have mercy. To pass that $4 billion, uh, whatever request that came from the executive. Yeah. $5,000 US. That, that's part of the well, system that means to follow. They call it lobby. Well, <laughs> that's another form of corruption. Exactly. Lobbying is corruption. But not enough form to perform your own duty. So it's corruption. It is ensuring in our constitution that they have to pass the pass a law for printing of money. It's part of their function. Why should we pay them to, to perform their function? And I heard that it was their own money. So they use the money as a bait to get them into doing their own job. But if these guys are giving three or four months and they are paid per hour, they won't do that because there will be no five thousand that I'm going to pay you. You're going to pay two hundred thirty dollars an hour, based on your whatever. We we'll do it based on your your, your educational qualification, your expertise, your experience. We we'll pay you based on that. So they won't try that. What they're trying now, they won't try it because they know that they have limited power. They have limited time to pass whatever they need to pass, and they will not be paid extra for performing their job. As for the judiciary, yes. Look, everything in Labdo will come to a standstill. Right now, if those guys fought a little bit, everything will spoil in our country. But if we elect them and they know they are answerable to us, they won't try it. Because we can remove them anytime. Not at the, they're not serving at the will and pleasure of the president. Like they said, the president has too much authority, too much power. We have to take away the power from the president. Because the president can, can, can hire, can dismiss without any due process. Because in the country, there is no due process. He can just fire you. But if we elect them, and I include, we include a justice minister to be elected, then we can talk about a peaceful nation. We can talk about democracy being in full swing in our country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fala. Uh, Alex, you, you, your idea is little, I don't want to say bizarre. Where you got this from? <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Jai, you're funny. <laughs> Alex, you, are, you unmute yourself so we can hear you. There you go. Okay, Dennis. All right, yeah, you see why I got my bizarre idea from reading, from the book. Right. You know, I read about this small country called Switzerland. And, I, you know, they're not much. It's just the best country in the world. And they also don't have too much. They have the higher living standard. That's where federal is from. The best tenants. Uh, they have the biggest banks. And they don't have a president, single president. They have a small council of seven people that right. ride the bus for everybody else. And uh, that country is doing quite well. So that's where one of the places I got the idea for. Another place is Germany. Germany has a president that has no power. They have the chancellor. They have a parliament. You have the chancellor, a uh, Mergo, and the president is just ceremonious. Uh, they have no executive power. Everybody has to vote on everything and pass uh, things based on that. So they're not fascist. The problem is, I think we look at America as a model, and we, what we see in America, we think is right. So if America said tomorrow didn't want any president, then I will follow. 
But when it comes to leadership and governance and living standards, America is not the best model to look at. So what I do is I go and look around all the countries in the world and I look at a different system and see which one is performing, which one is most stable. Switzerland is most stable. They don't have a situation where, you know, you have the Congress, Republican, Democrat fighting all the time because they have direct democracy. Everybody can vote on any referendum. So, Fala, again, you made a very, you know, very, or the points you're making tonight, I mean, my brother, you, 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 you're nailing it. I mean, it, and I just have a question for Dr. Kula, who no, thinks Alice, that... Alice, before you go to your question, I want you to tell me now, if we don't have president or vice president, what is it that we need to have? What is that, what would that structure look like? Okay, so we'll look, my, my goal in my campaign is to make Labrador look, the government look like Switzerland. And I, and I believe that if we make the government look like, uh, like Switzerland, then we will achieve the kind of success since that Switzerland ha is having over time. And our structure will be, it's very simple. We don't need to change too many things. You abolish the presidency and the vice presidency, right? We already have a legislator. They're represented by districts and counties. Every county has a superintendent. Elect the superintendent. The 15 superintendents serve as the uh, presidency in a, in a sense. They stay in the county whenever there's a major decision, they vote. If you have, if you have eight people who agree, it becomes law. They, they, that's all they do. The rest of the, uh, the thing is easy. So you solve that problem, one, the economically, you don't have to pay people running around with security to guard the president, presidential palace. You take all that money and you put it in education, farming, wherever. You let the superintendent of each county represent the people and they will vote on any national issue. Uh, that, that's my proposal, that's my campaign. And, you know, uh, unless somebody can tell me why that, why that wouldn't make sense, whether in Ibu or anywhere else, or it wouldn't go to the economy, uh, I'm ready to speak to that. Okay. Is, that okay. is that the question for me? No, the question time no, is coming it. now. Now, I want us to interact as they yeah. are, because you stated your point, I asked you questions, now I want all of you to interact. So, Alex, you say you have a question. And any of you have questions yeah. for the next person, please go ahead. Let me know. Let's start with yeah, my, my question. My, my question for Doc is, you know, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Take a lot of the powers from the presidency. So my question is, if you're taking all this power from the presidency, then why keep the presidency? If the president is not going to appoint, the president is not going to do the budget, the president is not going to, you know, then you don't need the presidency. Why do you think we need the presidency when you, when you are advocating taking all his or her power? The reason, reason I say take the power from the presidency and let's get away from the pure presidency, but not getting rid of the presence, president is because our culture and our norms is such that we come from a group of people who basically had chiefs and the chief was the, the leader of everybody and he made decisions with his council. So since we come from that background, it will be very strange for us to adopt something that's similar to let's say Switzerland or, or, uh, or Germany. Germany. I think we need, to, we need to stay in line with something that, 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 that is in, in tune with our culture, with our psychology, with our makeup. And that way you don't disturb the harmony of the society. We, we always have that big man that we look up to. That's the leader. You notice we call Ellen the mother of, of the nation. We call we are now the father of the nation. So there's always that psyche that exists amongst people that you have to take that into mind. Behavioral science and whatnot when you're developing systems and and whatnot in a, in a society. So for that reason, I would say, let's keep our chief, our big man, that will still propose his budget, but why can't the, the, uh, the, the, the legislators have a competing budget? Why should he just write the budget, give it to them, and they pass it? I, I don't see why they do that. There's no reason for them to do that. Uh, I don't see any reason why one man should appoint 4,000 people. That's too much power concentrated in the hands of one man. It creates a uh, system where you have people just doing what they're doing now, being seek offense. Everybody wants to live for the president, speak for the president, do everything to please the president because they know that's how they'll keep their job. But if we don't have, we take that, that away, it takes the pressure away, and then people can now be 
honest with the president. Say, Mr. President, what you're doing here is wrong. I think you should do it this way. Or Mr. President, this is what I plan to do for you in this cabinet position or in this particular position as 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 a uh, uh, an elected superintendent. This is what we're doing in our county and it's working for us. I think you should try this and so on and so forth. I think it, it brings honest dialogue and it brings real true leadership that is uh, responsive to the people. So, you know, take away a lot of the powers, but st still keep the big man there that keeps the harmony of our society as it is. That's how I look at it. And that's a good question, Alex. And I want uh, Mr. Cooney to answer that question too. And on top of that, Mr. Cooney, uh, uh, Dr. Kula talked about our culture. I think that's some of the problems because we want, we always want, as I say in one of my, 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 my writing or my blog, we always want somebody to worship. So most of the time, we, we are, right now we're looking for Messiah to, to save us from one president or the other. So this cultural thing of uh, we, we always have chief or we have always have someone to enslave us or to overboss us, I think that's the problem. What's your take? Yeah, I, I agree mostly with what Dr. Kula said, but I also feel that yes, there, I mean, in all of these things we're doing, we have to recognize the cultural context within which we are interacting. Uh, so I do agree that uh, we can, we as a people can act to, to, to take away some of the powers of the imperial presidency, but the presidency should still remain. We should act in a way that we don't confuse our people. Let me just diverse a little bit. We, during the, 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 the past regime, the past administration, there was this international effort to, to stabilize the security sector. And in that process, there was a complete disregard for our own security culture. Even the nomenclatures we gave our security officials were changed over time. We move from director of police to inspector general. And then you have all these funny deputy commissioner. It started to confuse the people. So in as much as we want to res uh, resolve issues, we have to keep it at a level where the confusion is at minimum. But the point out, the, the, the larger point I want to make is that I think we are, we are uh, uh, we've agreed now basically that there is problem wrong with the system. The question for you is how do we get a result that we want to have? Uh, uh, follow make a good point. The part-time legislature is a brilliant idea. Uh, Alex, the election of judges is also a brilliant idea. The question is, how do we achieve these goals? And this is where the advocacy issue comes from. This is where education comes from. This is where we have to change the mindset of people. This is where we have to culturize people. This is where we need to organize people for collective political action that we change some of these laws we have on the books that give power to these people. I, I, I don't favor much the process of interim government because for each time we have interim arrangement, it sends us back. I favor uh, people acting in an organized political faction that will bring about these changes. This is how our system will be strong. And this is why those of us in the, uh, the Diaspora Political Action Committee, we are saying that our responsibility is to identify politicians who subscribe to these issues that we are discussing today, who ascribe, who, who support dwells and not dwells, who support decentralization, who support uh, elections of superintendents. We need to come around to support these politicians. And in the event we cannot identify any of these politicians, we should have the ability to recruit individuals that subscribe to these goals. I think that's how we change the system gradually. Let us not look at this as a, a, a march dash to cross the finish line. Let us look at this as sacrifices we're making for generations that, that are not even born. If we look at it as a short-term political gain, we may miss the mark. And I think it is that short-term political gain that keep pushing us to this rush to change, to change, still looking for the injured, still looking for the injured. We have to really get down to the nitty gritty of this commence a high level of conscientization of, of, of our people, educate our people, organize them politically, and effect the necessary changes in our constitution that will grant us some of these things we are talking about. That's how we see it, and we think that is the best route to go. Thank you. Question, anybody? My question to... Um...
the gentleman that talked about a part-time legislature. I thought right now, as it, as it exists, our legislators seem to be a part-time legislator. They, they hardly work. You know, they're getting paid a lot, but they hardly work. So talking about bringing a part-time legislature, I think we should give them more time. We should, we should, add, we should add to their, their hours and the time that they work and the time that they're in session because there's serious work that needs to be done in that country. There's serious laws that need to be passed. They haven't passed laws that basically will prevent us from doing what we did before. If we had in the past a, a country where the president basically was a dictator for 20 some odd years, I don't see any laws on our books to make sure that we never have that happen again. If we had a president that, that basically surrounded himself with all his people, uh, apart from the people that he pointed, but everybody had to be somehow connected to the president. The president ran everything at one point in time. We need to find a way to stop that. Our, our integrity institutions need to be strengthened. Right now, our integrity institutions are being broken down by the president currently in power. I think if we continue to strengthen our integrity institutions, if we start to teach our kids ethics and morals and civics and finance and how a government runs from the time they're small, by the time these kids turn 18 and they're voters, they can then do what Mr. Cooney is saying, be a part of that political action committee without actually being a part of the political action committee. They'll be looking for people that ascribe to good governance, that ascribe to decentralization and other things that make a country what it ought to be. I don't subscribe to any interim government arrangement. I don't subscribe, subscribe to any arrangement that will take us away from where we are right now. I think we should focus on making the system better by decentralizing it. Is that a question? Is that, a question? that is a question on the part-time legislator. And <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's a comment, but, it's, but, but I mean. You made a statement. You didn't ask a question. What's your question? My, 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 my question is, what do we do? What, what do we do about the legislators, first of all? And secondly, people keep saying we have uh, uh, this angel or messiah complex. I don't think it's an angel or messiah complex. I think it's an issue where our people are looking for somebody that will deal with their issues because every mm -hmm. politics is local. And these people are looking at somebody, they looked at we as somebody who will come and, and, and basically knowing where they are as poor people will meet their needs. So I don't think Thank people you. are looking for Messiah. Dr. Dr. So Dr. how do we, how do we, to, how do we get our people to, how do we get our people to vote? How do we get our people to vote individuals that will meet their needs by making sure that they question and vet these individuals properly? Thank you, Dr. Can I, can I come in? Let Mr. Fala come in with his uh, counterpoint. Well, we, we've seen since 18, what, 47 to now, and uh, we've had the same system moving up and down. Like he said, he does not see the need for, 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 for a part-time legislature, which will extend their time. We get them 365 days and nothing is done. And they eat a lot of money, including the 5,000 that they just gave them. I think, <laughs> Based on the experience here in Minnesota, we can implement that over the airworks. Hire them, pay them per hour. We're going to pay you $10 an hour for this time. If we extend your time, it's over time. We're going to put maybe, um, what, $10 and, uh, on that, or $15 and pay you $45 an hour. If we extend your time, your stay. We can achieve that through an interim arrangement. If we want these people who, who empower now to pass any of what we are discussing, it will not go. They will not do it. They have tested power. They have become so accustomed to greed. <laughs> they won't. They won't pass it. The president will not even allow you to take some of those powers away from you. But if we have an interim arrangement where all of us will sit on the table and say, going forward, this is what we want. All of us are injured. That's why we are here discussing. All of us are injured. That's why we are bringing our ideas on the table so that we can implement them in our country and for the betterment of our people. It, we can do this. And we can only do this through interim arrangement. The current people will not allow it to go. When, when you, then who, who's going to allow the interim arrangement? If exactly. <laughs> We've passed that stage. We have not passed that stage. We have not passed that stage. We have that, 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 that stage before oh, that oh, stage. Hold on, Dr. Kula. 
You said we that stage. We had that stage. We never had that stage before, and we brought we, that stage, and we brought in. We can still go back to that stage. No, we cannot. Like we passed that stage. They are far. I got it. I, I got to say this. I don't think what what Fala is saying is the same thing as the interim government that Charles Taylor and all the rebel no, party put together. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not. Yeah, that's, that's not, that's not the interim. No. That's the rebel interim government. We're not yeah, exactly. That's completely that's different from what you say. Those days are gone. So we'll right. never fight war again in As, our country. Explain about where civil society, where we were come, sit on, sit together. Well, so if, if I can just add, Mr. Fala, can, can I, just I, me, I hold, hold on, Alex. Hold on, Alex. I want to. I want to get Mr. Fala points clear. Mr. Fala, so explain to us this interim arrangement, and then number two to you is a. Uh, the legislature, according to our current constitution, has so much power, number one, to create new countries and other political subdivisions, to provide for security of the republic, to provide for the common defense, to declare war, to levy taxes, duties, import, excise, and other revenue, or revenue bills, and all these things. Are you saying we're going to do that in three months and then on a part-time basis? We do uh, Three months, that's the same time. Okay. They go six months. It happens right in Minnesota. They go January, February, March, April, May. By June, they're done. Six months. We can do it. We and, can do it. And then country. on the interior arrangement, you mean or civil societies to, I mean, how would that yes. be allowed if, you know, just, just yes. a little yeah, bit? Mr. Yes, because if we say we went through Rapa it will not happen. This government will not happen. We can still petition the international community. Right. Tell them the system right. that we put in place has failed us. It's not working. How can you help us? We want you to help us. We want to go through an, another interim arrangement. Help us. We can petition the, the international government and it will help us. Thank you. Let me go to Alex before Kuni. Okay, so I, I don't agree that every time Liberia needs to solve a problem, they need to go to the white man or interim or some people. We need to fix our own problem. We are the oldest country in Africa. We order the most Asian countries. Why do we, we're not babies. We have some of the most educated people in the world. We have Nobel laureates, and we can't sit down and decide what we want. And, and so I will stop there to go another point. I've never seen a group of people who don't want to, who, who want to take responsibility for their own future than Liberian people. I'm proposing, everyone here come from a county has a heritage. You, and your people gather around. If you want that big man or that figure, you know, figurative human being that we will worship, do it in your county. You don't need to do it in Morovia or have George Rea or Ellie Johnson Salim. The culture where people have to look to leadership, to someone, those days are gone. We live in a millennium. We live in a, and all of us have cell phones and technology. And we're using our system all the way from the school age, where we're still looking for the boss man or the boss lady. Fala can run his county. I'm sure if wherever he comes from, or Dennis, if Dennis was the superintendent elected of Maryland County, you think Maryland County, he wouldn't care more for his people than George Weah does, or than I would if I was president. If you have to tell you what the problem here, the, the problem is simple. We like the system we have because we hope that someday our guy will get there. That's the bottom line. We don't like to see people take responsibility for themselves. Just like you see like bro today, everybody wants to do charity. Why? Not because it's something good for somebody. It makes them feel good that they can go to Liberia and they can give somebody something and they can take pictures so they feel like, oh, I'm in the self the lack of self-esteem. They're not telling the people, go and start your own business. You don't need to look to me. Call me and ask me how you can lift yourself up. But they want people to be the driver, people to be the, 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 the horse cleaner. And that's the mentality that we have. So we never want to empower people. That's why we have a presidency. Look at all the organizations around, all the political parties. And I know they get pissed with me, and I will continue on them. From the comments to the Henry Castor, look how they run their organization. They don't run it in a democracy. They don't, they don't run it with accountability. And you telling me that when they become president, somehow they will change. If I want to be president, 
As we live today, people should see how I run my organization. People should see how I live my life. And that's a mistake we we'll always make, that people will change when they get in power. No man will change. Saudi Arabia, all this country, there's, there's been president for 40 years in Africa. So let's get it real. We ourselves have to change our system. And I agree with Fala. Only I don't agree that we have to look to America. We have to demand. If we're going to protest, let's protest for the right thing. Not protest, president should come down. Let's protest, let's change the whole system and make it equitable for everyone. Everyone make a decision for the town and the district themselves. Mr. Uh, 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 I think I'm going to end where I'm going to start where Alex ends. And, 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 and this speak to the, the, the bigger question in this, in this discussion, is the how. How do we get the things we want? How do we get the kind of democracy we want? We are all saying the same thing. And I, I, I submit to you and I submit to the audience that we have to educate. We have to conscientize. We have to organize. We have to train. Because all of these things we're talking about, even the election of county superintendents and all of these things, if we don't educate, if we don't conscientize, if we don't train, we will be in the, even though it will be decentralization, but all of the things we're talking about here will be decentralized, all of these behaviors. If it is not the imperial presidency, it will be an imperial county superintendent. So Absolutely. this is where I, this is where I see the struggle. And the reason why, again, I see people dashing for this change is that because these steps that I just outlined are, are difficult to do, and most mm -hmm. of the application is for immediate benefit, people mm -hmm. rush for what is immediate. We are not mm -hmm. prepared to make the sacrifices for Liberians on bond. This is the reality we must face. It is easy to call for the stepping down of the president, but it's very difficult mm -hmm. to conscientize the minds of the people. It's very difficult to, to train the minds of the people, to let them know what election means, to let them know that your own advancement as an individual is linked to your voting. Today, today, uh, 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 and Brother Dennis, political campaign in our country is about singing and dancing, and then a the few couple of rights that follow. Can we do something in a way that tell our people that, look, that is not what politics is? This is the conscientization we are talking about. Until we can do this, unless we can do these things, and then use the power of the people to organize. Again, we all agree. No president will agree for you to take away their power. The people will have to organize. We have to protest for the right thing. Okay. Not, hum not human resource protest. Fire the person, fire that person. Nope. That better driven protest. M Mr. Kuni. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask something to what Mr. Kuni just said. I agree with Mr. Kuni, I agree with Alex. I Go ahead, Mr. Fala, but give us volume. Oh, you can hear me now? Okay, good. Okay, so like I, I agree with the both of them that there is a need that we educate our people when it comes to electing superintendents and other officials within the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the county. And it's not going to happen now. That education has to be a very long education. I issued a press release some time ago. I think there was some legislative election and I issued a press release that people should not be elected based on travel on tribe, but rather based on substance. If you have a supernatural election today in Lofa County, you know the Lamapo will win because they're in the majority. People will, will vote based on travel line, not on platform or political presentation. If you carry the same thing to Nimba, it will happen right there. The Giopo will win the minor people because the Giopo are in the majority. So like they said, education, education is key. To, for us going that side to elect superintendents of county, it's easier to elect a, 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 call it a city mayor because he or she belongs in that city and that tribe is in that city. It's easier to do that then to carry on a county level because one tribe of people will continue or one tribe will remain or one person from a particular tribe will remain in power for a very long time until the people can be conscientized and understand that you do not vote for people based on, on, on tribal affiliation, but based on uh, platform. And I've always said, I have the magic to the economic growth of Liberia. I have the magic. I have a 10-page paper. I discussed that with the current Minister of Finance, and he came here. 
are the ten page paper that we can resuscitate that count that, 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 that economy of that country that every district will get involved. I discussed that on your show some time ago. Yeah. And if people are involved in their economy and what affects them as a people and as a nation, all we're talking here will not be discussing. We won't be discussing. Uh, because our legislature is not willing to do those things, so there's a need that will reduce them, get them, pay them per hour, and just keep them there for six months and fire them after after June. They have no job and come back and start to talk to us, go back into private life. And from there, they come back, we'll see whether we can, we can bring them back. A quick input. Can I make a quick input? Yeah, make a quick input. So I can read some comments from Facebook. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Cooney. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, what we what we we've seen the, the the flaws of our system, and what we are calling for here is system building. System building. We have to be able to to commit ourselves to a process where we ourselves may may not even be the beneficiary. Not maybe not even the generation after us will be the beneficiary, but the generations in the future. Look, societies evolve, democracy evolve, democracy improve over time. Every time I hear people talk, oh, the rule of law, you know, we don't have the rule of law, our institutions not working, that's true. Sometimes they make the comparison to the American system. But let people know that the system in America was not donated to America by anybody. God did not donate it to the Americans. <laughs> they work at it over time. Yeah. And this is the point I'm making. For us to achieve these results, we have to work over time. It may not be this election that coming. It may not be 2023, but let us lay the foundation to change that quantitative politics of drumming and thinking to a much more qualitative politics where our election will be based on competence, on, uh, 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 on quality and everything, and it requires education. Let's use our mass appeal to change laws that don't serve our people, instead of using it to demand a uh, 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 pecuniary benefit for ourselves for the now. That's the point I'm I, I have a question. I have a question for Mr. Cornyn. I have a question for you two gentlemen. Oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, Alex. I, I want to I want to uh, give my uh, viewers few minutes to. I got I got uh, Shelley has a question for you, Elliot, or a comment. Is it Elliot? We are we are a democratic state, not a king and queen. So when you say abolish the presidency and the vice presidency, that's how she understood it. Mm -hmm. uh, Trocon Smith is talking to Dr. Kula. He say you are talking about federal leadership rather than the current central government structure is that what you're talking about uh patrick uh patrick so say this this question the one we are discussing tonight is one of the most important questions ever discussed on this show and i can guarantee this the most important question ever discussed on any show in the world <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is done right so, here only on focus on liberia okay truck can say uh the first speaker points on government decentralization is in the lead of this discussion, in my view. The third person, that is Mr. Fala, the view on legislative term is a view to consider. So uh, my our viewers are following. Dave just said, great discussion. Please address the issue of economic and financial control. The power of the purse or the wallet is essential. Who appoints the bank governor? We should, elect, should we elect them as well? Okay, so I, I didn't have a question for these two fine gentlemen because we keep, uh, I keep hearing that we need to conscientize our people. I know it's a political term, or we need to educate our people. I really don't understand what do they mean because I live in America and I see people with PhD that vote for people <laughs> that you will wonder if they even got any sense. So that would always be the case in human society. People are going to vote, whether you're educated, they're uneducated, they're going to vote based on a particular interest, views, values, or whatever. There's no amount of education will change that. 
the, what we do on focus on Liberia to me is sufficient evidence, uh, 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 sufficient education. If all of the networks and all of the talk show hosts will have programs like this and invite people to come and give constructive ideas on how we can make our country better, that's good education. Everybody will get some kind of view. But you have shows around the place where there's no education, there's no knowledge. What people are doing are just sitting there and, and renting for two hours themselves by themselves, okay? And then a whole bunch of people follow them. Now, we tend to judge success in Liberia by the number of people that follow you, right? So then Hitler was one of the greatest successful persons. Stalin was very successful too because Stalin had people following him. Charles Taylor had hundreds of thousands of people following him. You don't judge by numbers, you judge by quality. What kind of people are following you? So maybe that should go out to the people who feel like Josh, we are, oh, I have CDC and 200,000 people voted for me. Who are those people? What can they add in terms of you know, abilities to develop the country? And it seems to do the opposition, okay? What I believe is, Palazzo, you got 10 people, I got four volumes of books on development. We can add it together, and I'll show these other people around for like we can all add it together, but we have to come up with a solution. And that solution can be five years or not, 10 years. Like people economically, like the caller just asked, it's there. There will be no Liberia economically in two to three years. The country has no money. It's bankrupted. All right. We're living on borrowed time. We're in the emergency room. Then you're saying that, oh, let's put a drip on and let's hope and pray and educate. It's not going to work. We are going to go back to war if the economy does not improve for any country in the world, including the one with India in America. So don't kid yourself. When a man is hungry and he can't feed his baby, what are you going to do? He's going to either come and arm rob you or he's going to come and try to start an interruption or jump behind some idiot so that he can eat. And you will be right. Thank you, Alex. You asked a question. Can I come in? Dr. Kula, I want Dr. Kula to give his viewpoint before you come in because he's uh, unusually quiet. No, no, I, I, I'm enjoying the back and forth, but I was going to say exactly what uh, Alex said. I don't agree with this conscious ties and educate our people. Yeah, Liberia has a young population right now and they're voting based on sentiment. Yes, but the average individual in Liberia older, young, educated or uneducated, is gonna vote based on what their interest is, what they feel that person brings to them, you know? And I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to this belief that our people, because they don't speak English or because they haven't had formal education, that they're not educated or that they're not wise or that they can't analyze situations and say, mm -hmm. hey, I think where is good for me in this way. And Cummings may be good for me in this way, but Hey, between the two, who do I choose? So let, when, I, when we talk about educate, I think we should be thinking about educating our kids, right? I thought, for example, that Ellen Johnson Salif, when she came to power, that the kids that graduated 12th grade would have a different mindset than the average Liberian kid or the average Liberian person. What do I mean by that? If you notice, our kids that are born in America have a certain mindset have a certain orientation to life than kids that are born in Liberia. Because what? They see what people around them do. The older people, they're, they're, the older adults, their teachers, their pastors, their parents. And based on that, they develop certain characteristics. They, they develop certain beliefs, certain norms, you know, certain things that we pick up in our society. Big man can't lie. Who said big man can't lie? Why, why are we still instilling certain bad values in our people. So I think the education must start from small. We gotta start from the, pre, the, the kindergarten level, pre-K level and go on up through. So by the time our kids get to 18, when they can vote, they will have critical thinking skills, analytical reasoning abilities. That's what we need to be doing then, 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 then focusing and saying, oh, our people cannot vote or make a decision based on the fact that they're not educated or they're not exposed. I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that. I mean, the fellow? Dr. Kula, nobody said that our people are not educated. Uh, just that we look at education from one side, that is the Western side. But uh, our traditional people are also educated. My mother never been to school, but she could write the Gisi language very well. 
very well. Not being in English school, but you will write the Kisi language very well. So that's not what I was saying here. When we talk about educating our people, meaning to conscientize them, to tell them this is what you need to know, this is what you need to know, this is what you need to know, this is what you need to know. If you do it this way, we think it will be better. It will move us forward. We're not going to bring them down or saying, oh, you're not educated, so we should tell you this. No, that's not what we're suggesting. Here. We just want them to do the right thing and look at things from a more, more uh, horizon uh, point of view and be more holistic. This is a follow up. When does conscientizing, when does conscientizing stop being conscientizing and become propagandizing? You know, but a lot of what I see in Liberian uh, um, radio and TV and uh, Facebook forums are a lot of propaganda. So who who's conscientizing are we taking? You know, I mean, are we taking uh, Mr. Coney's conscientizing with his group? that he's put together? Are we taking people like why Michael Gilman's conscientizing? Are we taking Costa's conscientizing? Who's conscientizing? You see what I'm saying? We're looking at the common good. If all of them are conscientizing, we're looking at the common good. What is good for us is what we're looking at. That's what we want to conscientize. Can I, can I come in? Go ahead. Can I come in? Go ahead, Doctor. Come in. Start, start your video if you can. So, so that's a very that's a very important question about conscientizing or educating because it seems that the people that are educating or educating are the problem because what kind of education are they passing on to these people? Exactly. Okay, so you can I, ask I'm Costa. Gonna... Costa yeah. would say he's conscientizing our people. He's, yeah, let, let's uh, let let Mr. Cooney come in. Let's say when we speak about conscientizing and we speak about education in a political sense, we are necessarily not referring to classroom education. We're talking about that the, the creating the awareness to the people for them to know their condition. Example, before you say our people don't know their condition, oh, they our on, people don't know their poor. Can you, Mr. Oh, hold on, <laughs> hold on Mr. 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 Kula, Mr. Mr. Kuni. Let, yeah. let's use, let use uh, Henry Pedro Costa conscientizing the people. No, I'm not going to use that. I brought it. I got my own example. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to Costa is not my example of consciousness building. OK. okay. The, let's hear your example. The, conscious, the, the consciousness building I'm talking about, here we are, we're talking about decentralization. OK. There is a general view here that we cannot even get decentralization because the current legislature may be opposed to it. The president may be opposed to it. Some of these powers that we want to take away from the president, we may not get it because the president will be opposed to it. What I'm talking about is a campaign. I believe if we take, if we took a campaign to our people, if we go to the various counties and explain the benefit of decentralization to our people, even people who may not vote for us as leaders, they will vote for that situation. We will have people that will support that situation. That is the education I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kind of education uh, that was launched, let me go backwards, in the day of the progressive, where the progressive movement, they use the condition of the workers at the various uh, 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 plantation points to make them aware of their own condition. And as a consequence of that, workers were able to negotiate better salaries. Let me go back one again. We were all educated in Liberia, but we didn't know that we needed property to vote. We didn't know that. We just thought that as a Liberian, you would need property to vote. How did we get to know? It was education through political action. These are the kind of things I'm talking about. You conscientize the people to the point where the people see the benefit of what you're talking about and they agree with you to work with you to organize to achieve the result so that we can get referendum approved, so that we can get people elected that believe in what we say. It is that kind of process over time that will lead to the result we have. I want to start a caution here. People who feel that our situation is so dire, is so urgent, so we need to take urgent action, are leading us in a direction where we may retrograde because we had the same argument before. We had an argument, we had, I mean, we had the same argument during Tobata. 
We were not patient. We needed to act now because turbo was against progress. We moved turbo. We had a seen argument against Doe. We always acting out of the sense of urgency. And these urgent appeal always lead us to either revolutions or civil revolution. Right. What I'm calling for is changing the minds of the people to recognize their own condition so that they can organize on the basis of the knowledge they have about their condition so that they can use that knowledge to build power to change their condition. Right. And that's why. So funny, let me let me just speak to that real quick. Do you realize that one, people, one certain second, people in our society see the progressives as the devil that they exploit? They feel that like certain people that, that the progressives exploited our people and caused the death of Tolbert, and that that somehow has turned us backward. So that that, that <laughs> did not that did not remove the achievement of them educating us about the right to vote without property. We stay in Georgia. They didn't negate that. My, my question to you, uh, Mr. Cooney, and uh, all of you is, how then do we know? Because this is this conscientization or this education is going to come from different people, from political parties, from politicians most of the time. So how are we going to die? commentators like Costa. That, okay, this is the kind of education we need, or this is the kind of conscientization we need, or this is the kind of understanding we need should I be able to vote. How, how, how do we do that? Can I, can I come here again? Can I come here? Yeah. Yeah, and this is where we trust our people. This is where now you talk about the intelligence of our people. Our people are capable to discern what is in their interest and what is not in their interest. In the days prior to multi-party democracy, there were people advocating against multi-party democracy that the one party, the true party, one party system was okay. So there was counter conscientization going on. But in the final analysis, the bulk of the people decided that multi-party democracy was right. Today, whether we like it or not, Liberians are electing their own leaders, whether they're bad leaders, whether they're good leaders, but no longer is a representative of Sano Kante being selected to the Masonic temple. No more. So this is what I'm saying. If you're leaving with the people to decide, who is, who, who is building a national cause for conscientization and who is building a selfish cause under the guise of a, a conscientization? I trust the people. I trust the judgment of the people on that. Well, I agree with you. Can, 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 can I come in? Yeah, follow. I agree with, uh, with okay. Dr. here. Yeah. And um, let me say this, that if Fala, the youngest commissioner ever in the history of the Ministry of Finance, <laughs> The Republic of Liberia, if they need Fala to rise to that position, the youngest ever, it was because of the sweat and blood of our brothers and sisters that were referred to as revolutionary. Those who fought, who started this thing in 1979, in the 70s, some are gone, some are alive. We owe it to them. We should be grateful and thankful to them that today, like Dr. Connie said, that you can wake up and name Kula, Dr. Kula. We wake up from Nima Kane and say, here, I am. I will hold this. I will hold that position. We must be grateful to these people. They did well. We cannot just continue to bring them down. They did very well for us. Things <laughs> fell around, along the way. Like any of us, we make plans and things fall around, along the way. And it fall among, among rocks. But that does not mean that we should tear you down or destroy you. No. They did well. And for me, personally, one day, I shall certificate them for what they have done Thank you. for our nation and people. Thank, Thank you. you. Alex, you are coming in. OK, yeah, what I, what I want to say, I mean, I think the discussion is about us changing the system. We all agree that the system is, is not working. Go ahead, Alex. Because I mean, yeah, we're not seeing that. Okay, you can hear me clearly. Yeah, you 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 change your 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 connection. That's why. Okay, let somebody come in, and I'm gonna fix my technical issues, and I'll come back in. Okay. Okay. Let us. So I don't want to interrupt. Just joining us. This is focused on Liberia. Yeah. This is our debate Friday. We are discussing the political structure, the political system of Liberia. All of us here, we there is a consensus that it is now working. 
something needs to be fixed. And what looks like a general consensus is we have to cut down the power of the presidency. There are things that we need to do. We have a, a kind of president, a kind of structure that is not working for us. And we are taking shortcuts by any time changing presidents or the same problem remains. So tonight we are discussing how do we fix this structure? What needs to be done? I have with me Dr. Batum Kula, who believes that uh, decentralization is the answer. Mr. Wilmot Cooney and the um, Liberian Diaspora Political Action Committee, LEPAC, also believe decentralization. Mr. Austin Fala believes that uh, we need to uh, fix the existing structure, improve on it. And one of those improvements is like having a legislature on a part time basis, electing our judges, and so on and so forth. And Mr. Alice Chuchu Jones looked at Switzerland as a perfect example of a country without a president that is doing so well. So, and uh, if you just join us, that's the discussion. And this is a, what a great way to end the year debate Friday on focus on Liberia. Alex is still not ready. So let Can me- Can I borrow Alex time? That this is not the, uh, there's not Congress where people can wave this. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, I mean, uh, uh, moderator, I'm actually passionate about this issue because I think we need to think it through keenly. Look, again, uh, we may, like 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 uh, Brother Fala said, every human being is flawed to mistake, but we have a responsibility to look at what works and what doesn't work and build on that. And so some of this conscientized, conscientization program we're talking about, look at the adult literacy program that we have prior to the, to the coup. None of today's advocacy is even thinking about adult literacy program. Look at the Susuku project that was teaching it, uh, 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 local people in the process of, of full production. These are all educational things. We're not talking about classroom. But what I'm saying is if you work with our people in this manner and the people know the benefit of what you're doing, the people themselves will make the decisions that we have to make. We have, a, Mr. We, we Mr. have I have a question for Mr. Pony. Pony. Mr. Cooney, before your question comes in, Mr. Cooney, we right. see what the people are doing. Right now, the people uh, 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 believe that, uh, for example, again, we're going to use the example of Henry Costa. We're going to use the example of Prophet Key when he's talking, 1,000 people are listening and watching. And they so, are even printing his t shirts. But listen, so this is what they're doing. This is what they're doing that is different from what I'm what I'm making what I, what I, what I'm making reference to. What they're doing today is expressing the same urgency, some of which we've heard here tonight. Our country will soon collapse, and because the country will soon collapse because of this prevailing situation, we need to act now to change the the the, the, the system of governance. That's what they're doing now. It is different from what was done to build the consciousness of the people so that the people on their own can take decisions. Those days, the, the advocacy was not uh, human resource related. It was not remove Dennis Jack, remove uh, Dr. Kula, because we all know, even if we were to remove those people, the problem still remain in the highly centralized political system that prey on the rest of the country. It doesn't remove that. All you've done is just change actors. We are and, trying and to I, change Mr. the system. Coney, I disagree with you. I will let you come in. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me come in real quick. I disagree with you. And here's why I disagree with you. Yes, the progressive were doing all the stuff that you talked about, the adult literacy, the susuku, and all of that. And their motto was, and the cause of the people, the struggle continues. In the end, they, they, the progressive may not have been saying, uh, as, far, as far as you're concerned, human resources move this person from here, move that person from here, because they knew within the TWP, they had no power to, to ask Talbot or whoever to uh, Talbot to move this person, move that person. But in the end, what happened? They had regime change, okay? In this situation where you are denigrating Costa and the others, they are, as far as they're concerned, conscientizing the people about what the government is currently doing by destroying the, in, the, the integrity institutions, by destroying good governance, and therefore they feel that their government should be held accountable for that. 
Now, my question to you is this: Your political action committee that you you have set up that you that you referenced uh, several times now. What are you guys doing in the way that the progressive did with the education, the adult literacy, and all of this? What are you guys doing in that in that manner to conscientize our people? Well, that's exactly what we're doing. We're conscientizing our people. We're educating our people. We're telling them, you know, what uh, uh, what election means to them. Their civic responsibility to 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 to, to look at candidates. How that, how, how are you doing huh? that? How are you carrying that out on the ground? Information, we're doing it through information sharing. We're doing it through uh, small small town hall meetings with the people. And like I say, it is a process that takes time. Mind you, this organization was just organized May of this year. So we have not begun to do the big things, but that is the goal. That is the goal. And what I'm saying is, I'm not denigrating Costa. I mean, if I disagree with advocates, it doesn't mean I'm denigrating him. It's You're putting him down. You said they're selfish. They're they're looking out for their own self. What what, what people would well, think that, you are, are looking out for yourselves too. That, You're looking to that, elect people that will be in line with you guys, and perhaps you yourselves are looking to be elected. So anybody can say you have you have a motive as well. And and the person will get a right to say that, but it's not if the person says I got a motive, he's not denigrating me. So I'm not denigrating anybody here. What I'm saying, the, the contrast I'm drawing is that. There is an advocacy with regard to national purpose that create alternative. Cost, uh, let's look at the current advocacy. Get rid of this, get rid of that. What is the alternative for our country? Assuming everything you want is granted, what is the alternative? We've not been given the alternative. When we were told that one party system was wrong, we got the education on the benefit of multi party democracy. That's what we work for, that's what we struggle for. That's what we struggle for. Suppose they tell you what they're doing is to make sure that good governance no, we should, and we integrity of institutions oh. are not destroyed. Suppose oh, they tell you that's what yeah, they're yeah, advocating Dr. Dr. Fula, Dr. Fula, sure Fula, that, I don't, that, I don't that think that's a fair question. institutions and good governance stays in place. Hold on. Suppose that, 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 in Liberia, we always want to educate other people. We all want to tell people what they should be doing and how. That's wrong. All you guys are wrong. When you came to America, nobody conscientized you, educated you. What it did, you went out, you had the ability to go to a school or go get a job. That's all people need. People don't need no, I'm not part of, I've never joined any party in my life, in my entire life. Go and check the record. And I don't need a party in order to succeed. Because the system here, I don't need to go and join Democrat, Republican in order to develop myself. And that's what I'm advocating in Liberia. To say that, create a system where the people can educate themselves. They don't need to listen to Alice Jones to tell him what's good for them and what's bad and who's good and who's bad. If you, if you have universities in every county and you have good high schools with computer network, People will get their own information, but we like to stay in a position, in a high position, as if we know the answer and somehow we are, we, we are the only one who should give information and we never want to receive. And let me go to your question, Dr. Kula. I totally and fundamentally disagree with Henry Costa, what he's doing. Okay. And I will tell you why. Mm -hmm. I've written about Henry Costa. Okay. He himself has praised some of the things I've said about him. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's only when you say something that is negative about these people, just like you're saying with George Weir, then they have a problem with you. Then somehow now you're supporting somebody else. So the very thing that they say they're fighting for, change, equality, mm -hmm. freedom, scrutiny, the world of scrutinizing the government. Mm -hmm. Why don't we start by scrutinizing the organization? That's the point I'm making. They have no moral authority because if a man goes on on, 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 on record, trying to extort money from the government that he's criticizing to pay him so that he doesn't give negative news. He has no credibility in my book. I don't care who he is. I do not want this person to be representing any cause. What he needs to do, first of all, is apologize that he's sorry for what he's done and it was criminal. Then maybe some of us can say, Okay, this man has a little bit of integrity when he does something wrong. And that goes to Mr. Josh Ria too. These people will admit to nothing wrong and there's suitors behind them.
So again, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kone, if I disagree with you, there's no urgency to you and me. We're going to go to work tomorrow. We're going to probably eat our steak dinner today before we go to bed. But there are hundreds of thousands of people in Liberia today, and there's dozens of people that are going to die tonight because of simple things like a small ampicillin. Uh, 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 that person doesn't have, or that person who, who, who mother has to die in child labor doesn't have five years for you to conscientize or educate or form your fancy organization. We can say that because we have the luxury and the convenience. Harry Carter and, 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 and what is people who are talking about politics, they're fine. These are people who work with the very government. These are people who support the very government. And if we want to be real in Liberia, we have to be real ourselves. And when our friends do something wrong, and our political party do something wrong, we need to speak up. And that's the problem with the hypocrisy in Liberia so much. You know, Mr. Cummings was there taking a war for Ellie Johnson Sally, who was the one of the most corrupt, according to the Antonio General. Yeah. He said nothing about it. Yeah. But when George Weah comes there now, then George Weah is corrupt. When Ben Nair was supporting child soldiers and supporting child sailors in Liberia to kill men, women, and children, and benefiting from it, <laughs> Henry Castle was not getting his mouth, his big mouth, about Ben Nair. Why are they giving the more authority today now to, 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 to speak about anybody else? And we have to be honest with ourselves. Okay? Let's be honest with ourselves. If we want a country that is going to live by rules and laws and integrity, it should apply to me, it should apply to Henry Kassler, it should apply to George Weah. If we want a government that is accountable, then our organization should be accountable. That, that, but you got little George, that, little George and little who's behind you, and, 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 and Yekia Calabar, and all people who, who made you the COP chairman? Did you have an election? Did you have any kind of system? So you don't have the ability or the authority. When you start doing that, then you can come so we can have a conversation. And by the way, I love all my brothers, but I will keep their feet to the fire. Well, Alex, you've gone into issues about hypocrisy that is different from what I'm discussing with the brother here. I'm saying to Mr. Corney, if you feel you're conscientizing people, these people also feel they're conscientizing people. So I mean, who's to say you're the best conscientizer than, than the other They're person? Wrong. Where, does, no, where does no, nobody should be conscientizing anybody. Yeah, where does conscientizing is... become propaganda, propaganda and all of that, you know? So let, let, let's be Correct. real about this thing. So, uh, that's not, and, uh, and that's a political, uh, that's a political uh, tool we have. Everybody so, yeah, wants to see everybody else. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Alex. Let a fella come in too because he's not on camera, so we can cheat him here. So let us uh, uh, switch the discussion around to how best we think we can move our country forward. Now, let me make the following suggestions. One, if we will keep the current system and keep that current president, the following must be done. One, we, we have too many educated people from that country around the world. We have economists, we have doctors, we have Dr. Kula there. We have uh, agriculturists, we have uh, people from diverse social, people from human services. You muted yourself. Yeah. Okay. Are you there hearing me? Yeah, now we're hearing you. you. You just unmuted yourself. Yeah. Go ahead. It's to put together a team, not that team they put together when they brought. You keep muting yourself. Who, who could not, uh, uh, individuals who could not propound anything new. No PhD that a guy in 1960 have not even written any journal, have not said anything, but they say they get PhD and go discuss current economic issues. Mr. Fala, to, to plot the new map, you sit down on the old map. Go ahead. Yeah, well, if you are match, I get too much hole. Big hole, man. You sit on it, when you sit on it, you love my parables. I know. So, what they need to do is to put together expertise. And bring in these experts so that their expertise can be utilized. Put people a committee together on health, engineering, on road construction. Well, who's going to put these people together, Mr. Fallon? This government. I'm talking about if we cannot remove if this government, we stay this there. Is the structure, this is the system that we all say that it's not working. So they're not going to do it. Yeah, they're not going to do it. So we, we, we find another alternative for them. Okay, Fala, call me. Let's get together and let's talk about how we can call me. Let's work one hour a week on solution and give the librarian people. Let's yeah, call Dr. Kula. Let him take one hour a week. Hold on, hang on, hang on. The final minister, yeah. ha, ta, ta, ta. Okay. forget the final minister because like Dennis said, these people are not going to do it. Let me suggest this. They're not going to do it. 
Hold yeah, on, but, not doing, but the idea is tomorrow when history is written, will be included that we made this suggestion. God help yeah. me, call Dr. Kula and, and young guys who are medical doctors to come and look at our, our, our health system and see how best we can put, uh, put that together. Bring engineers, road construction, so that they can look at that. Bring economists that they look at the, the economy of Liberia. Bring social workers, bring because there is a need that the entire country need to be what? De-traumatized. Again, Mr. Fala. Mr. Fala let, let, me, let me just jump in there. Can I come in now? Let, let me jump in real quick. Let me, I, I, no, I need to speak to something that Mr. Fala no, just no, said. No, no, uh, uh, no. Let Kone come in first before you. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Look, I mean, I like, the, I like the discussion that is unfolding. And even though certain areas I'm surprised, but there are certain areas that, that, that gladdens my heart. Uh, I see the, the general opposition to, to education, to conscientization, to trying to enlighten uh, the minds of our people. I think, I think with, skepticism uh, instead of opposition. With, 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 with regard to, to making political decisions that affect their own lives. And I agree with some of the things that Alex said, but let me disagree with Alex. Alex, even in America here, despite our level of education, when it comes to the political process, there is still we've still been educated on what to do. Groups that have issues, they sent us flyers, they gave us reason why we should vote and, and, and on certain issues. They do, they do. So, I mean, I hope you're not taking, you guys are not taking this education to say, we're going to put the Liberian people in a some kind of educational company that re-education training camp. It's just basic awareness as to the condition of the people so that these people can make their own decision. It's not for women only to make a decision for them. There are people today, there are, there are marketeers in Liberia that are paying marketing dues for their market store. But even the garbage, the garbage from the market store is not being collected, even though they are paying fees for that. Mm. These are the basic things that people need to be aware of. Right. And this is where people get empowerment. So the, the uh, I, I'm coming. I'm coming. Cooney, I've heard those women complain about the fact that they're paying dues and they're not getting the services so that suggest, they deserve. So I don't think you suggest, need to educate them about suggest, that. <laughs> to suggest, to suggest that we can fix our political. Uh, 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 system in the absence of education, in the absence of awareness, in the absence of conscientizing people, I want to believe is a prescription for failure. Exactly. Okay, Mr. Kuni, here is, uh, I think, I don't think your colleagues are against that, but here is the risk of this elite mentality that, okay. It's not elitist. I disagree. It's not elitist. <laughs> Like, okay. Well, okay. Okay. Why? Why are you doing it educating, and right. why am I not doing it? Why am I not educating you? Tell me what gave you the right to tell me what's right in Liberia. How I should vote? Why shouldn't it's, I do the same to you? You see, you you also you you see the reason why you oh. ask that question is because you make the assumption that people that we interacting with they themselves don't have anything to contribute, which is totally false. In, in, in interacting with these people. Yeah, but, that, but that's why the dialogue, that's why dialogue is what we're having right now, where nobody, everyone's coming with their own ideas. We want more people to participate in this kind of discussion, and people can see for themselves a reason. You don't need and to join a political awareness. party. You don't want that conscientization. Oh, oh, you, you, you don't well, want that you talk, and, and, and Mr. Connor, you talk about election process in America. That's why they have a debate. That's why they have shows on TV, CNN, and they bring two sides to discuss and debate an issue. That's the thing they were doing here. The difference is when you follow, the difference is when you listen to somebody like Benny Nayuri, okay? They assume you only listen to Benny Nayuri. You listen to nobody else, right? What are you gonna, what, 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 what are you gonna get? Are you gonna get educated by listening to Jeff Henry Casa? I listen to Henry Casa, I listen to different people. Uh, Alex, Alex, so, what, what is, hold, hold on Mr. Pony. what is your point about Educating people, why are you against that? Are you saying I'm not for educating people, but yeah, for institution no, no, yes, of education? Yes, yeah, my point. Institutional because, education is different because civic where you have a college. No, civic education is everywhere here in the United States. Even yeah. when a law is passed, you have people that will go and explain it. Like, for instance, when the uh, Obamacare started, you have people that went from uh, uh, 
Step it was the bitter, he, Dennis. Well, you understand? I'm not saying is, uh, there are people that were pay, that volunteer to go and explain the law and how people should go online and register. So this is done all the time. So what's your problem? Okay, with but that? that's not that's not why Mr. Tony is advocating. Exactly. No, 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 are going to conscientize Liberian people on how to vote, how to make decisions, and so forth. That was the same thing we heard from Bagel Matthew. That was the same thing we heard from Ellie Jenny Sally. That was the same thing we heard from Charles Peter and all these people. That somehow they could tell us, I was a young man at the time, that somehow they knew all the solutions and all the problems. They never had a dialogue like this, where Charles Peter and Ellie Jenny Sally sat down and said that we and you and I are doing here today as intellectual equals. Okay, I make a point, you can, you can critique it. You make a point, I can critique it. That's what institutions of education do. We don't have that in Liberia. That's why our universities, we should be advocating so that we build universities in Liberia where there will be history, there will be civics, and people can sit there and they can debate and discuss and learn just like in America. You have a system, you only have one or two universities. Then you're talking about one build a power group that will go and teach people. That's what the university is supposed to do, teach people accounting. Go to the markets in Liberia, get these women to do adult literacy programs so that they can manage their skills and manage all these things. Okay. So we should be advocating for uh, institutions. Mr. Kuni, wait, let Mr. Mr. Uh, Dr. Kula was going to come in before. Yeah, uh, um, this is what I see in what Mr. Kuni, uh, Mr. Kuni's position and what Alex's position is. Let me bring it home. To Liberia and everything that exists right now. When we had our elections, there were no debates, there were no organized debates where every uh, uh, um, candidate was supposed to go to. So certain people mm -hmm. around, we had told him, don't go. Don't go to no, uh, uh, mm -hmm. don't go to no, no, no debate because if you go there, my man, you'll spoil it. So just keep quiet. The people like you right. anyway, they'll vote for you. So we didn't have that free exchange that Alex is talking about. We've never had that free exchange. So I think it becomes, you know, incumbent upon us to be aware of people who say they're going to conscientize our people, you know, and 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 not really go and 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 uh, let's say propagandize like everybody else is doing. When you listen to Kosa, that's what he's doing. You listen to why Michael Gilman, he's doing it. You listen to all these different. Everybody got their own little agenda that they're pushing, and I think that's what mm -hmm. Alex is saying. I, I may be that's wrong, but saying. I think that's what he's saying. You you you, you, you nailed it on the head, Doc. Right. You nailed it on the head. Let me make a point I want to pick up from, from, from Austin. Austin was saying that he needs to bring people together, docs are together, and all of this. Everybody has their different ways of doing things. Some of us have already started doing things that we needed to do. I don't know how many of y'all heard about the Liberian neurosurgeon that recently did surgery at JFK on his own with a Liberian team, and it was a big news in, in, the, uh, in the newspaper. If you heard about that, the reason I'm bringing this up is because some of us have been behind the scenes working to make sure stuff like that happens. For example, mm -hmm. there's a um, neuroscience foundation called the Kolibu Neuroscience Foundation. I contacted a friend of mine here, Dr. King, a, neuro, uh, a neurosurgeon, and told him, I said, can you bring something like that to Liberia? And he worked with them and they brought that company or that foundation to Liberia. And they have been working over the years to get Dr. Avin Dona to where he is right now, where he can do certain procedures without them. Why, why did I bring this up? Because each one of us, Austin Fala, instead of saying you're discussing with the, the finance minister, find a way that you, you can make this thing practical, where you can get something done in Liberia and not just wait or talk to these guys and nothing happens. Let, okay. Let's find a way to make things happen, is, is what you. I want to bring up. Hold on, Mr. Putin. I have a, I have somebody on the line who joined the line who's also from Focus on Liberia. Mr. William King, are you there? William, are you there? William is listening to the to the uh, discussion and he wants to join. So yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Now is, can is there any me? echo or no? William, you are used to this, so I'm not going to uh, talk about echo. You all, you already know what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So William, you you uh, 
you you came in here while we are discussing so what was what brought you here william oh there's a couple of things that i think came up there there is echo william you know what to do let me go to kuni while you fix your your issue mr kuni yes uh, okay um, is it fixed now no no let, let's you know what to do go ahead mr kuni uh, 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 that is, um, I, don't, I don't want us to lose sight of, of where we are in this discussion. This is a very important discussion. I think we've all conceded that our system is wrong and the system needs to be changed. And, and, and the question that we have to provide answer to is how. It is the how I think we are discussing here. And I think maybe some of the misconception that is being generated is maybe a lack of understanding on what, what uh, some of the points that have been stated. Uh, building awareness, conscientizing people, edu civic education to people is not a, a indoctrination camp that you are conducting for people. And I really don't see how we can make progress in our democracy if we don't take step, if we don't take step to create awareness to create enlightenment for the population. If we fail to do that, we will be having the same result that we are having today. I believe fundamentally that when people are aware of their condition, they will take positive action to change their condition. We're talking about decentralization. The change need to come from the bottom. If counties are aware of the benefit of decentralization, we can mobilize people in those counties for the appropriate constitutional amendment to achieve that result. If people are aware of the benefit of electing judges, we can mobilize those people to get the kind of changes that we need. Basically, this is what I'm saying. Thank and you. anybody uh, uh, categorizing that as propaganda is, you know, is far from what I'm saying. When people... Well, the, the, the sub back on mafia. What we're saying, it doesn't I come work. In, I come in, I come in, let me, 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 and let them do their own thing. Okay, it's not every Liberian that is in school. It's not every Liberian is a student. We have our people that don't go to school. There are people living they in the They get their business era. loans. They oh, get their business is, loans. Get their courses to build a life. Ellis, I'll meet you. Mr. Cooney, complete so I can bring William in. William, is, uh, is, he says his blood is boiling. So he came in. Yeah, so <laughs> what I'm saying is every Liberian, the 4.5 million people in Liberia, all of them are in school. And I gave example of how people can be enlightened. I gave the example of the property clause, how it was changed, okay. where people came together and they changed it. I gave example of multi-party democracy. Was it a propaganda to call for multi-party democracy? Don't, was, don't mind that, Mr. Kuni. Was it a propaganda to say <laughs> Liberia should vote without property requirement? You call that propaganda? That's education that benefited the nation. Th thank you. Th thank you. Mr. William King, you, you, you. But what's going on right yeah, now is a lot yeah, of propaganda. Yeah, yeah what I want to say. Okay. To, uh, William, King, William King is our yes. business and economic forum. Yeah. And uh, he has a point to make. Mr. King. So, gentlemen, thank, thanks everyone. I've been listening and a couple of things you guys brought up. And I think that's, that's some of a little bit of the problem. See, uh, look, the progressive did not start a lot of the things, social development, only when the progressive was there. Some of these social developments and things that we wanted to do as Liberia started way back from the time of independence. The whole thing was that there were resources that were very limited. So a lot of the things that we talk about, um, you know, voting, for example, voting, I want you to know we, in 1946, we had that whole voting thing that was with Tubman, where people had to vote, they had to have a, a certain hut thing. Then we did it with, with that. But we have to look at some of these things within the historical and the global context. Even in the US, there was voting without representation. So we can't look at Liberia as if we are the exception to some of these things that were in um, place. 
Liberia as a whole was one of the first abolitionist nations because when some of our people came back, they said that they would oppose any kind of slave trading. And that was why the territory and everything like that was limited. And we fought very hard against any of those ships going. But resourcefulness, uh, resources, we didn't have it. So we have to build, like Dennis saying, on the old mat. From the beginning of time, every president has tried to the best of their ability to try to do something with Liberia. And what the progressive people, what they discovered when they came in and they started looking around was they're like, man, this thing was not as easy as we thought it was going to be. Because nobody just sit down when you're a minister, they come knocking on your door and say, oh, we got a lot of money to give to Liberia. You have to work sweat and hard for it. So we know that there are resources constraints within our whole nation that prevents certain things from moving forward. We can't sit down here and think that all these presidents they just want to sit down in there and enjoy themselves. They didn't have no, no plans. I've looked at countless documents. People have wonderful plans, even the pro poor. Even if you took away the people who wrote it and you, and you read their whole plan, they tried to do something and they have a huge problem with implementation. A huge problem with implementation. I think that's one of our huge challenge with everything that we do is that we, every president gets blamed. We have no perfect president, but yet all of our resources, all of our Liberian professionals, whether they work in Liberia or they leave, they get top positions in other countries and they do well. So other countries are using our talent, yet as soon as our talent touch base in Liberia, there's so much constraint. So we have to stop that. Okay, so, so William, looking at uh, the solutions we are talking about, what is your solution? What is your position? Um, I like what I like what Alex is saying. You know, I like the idea of decentralization. I like it very much. Now, uh, there are other countries that, although you have the president, and vice president, and different things like that, they work within a decentralized format. They work within that format. So maybe for us, Liberia, it may be too much of a uh, abrupt change. It may be too drastic. But what would be good is if our our leaders, our president realize the advantages of working in a decentralized uh, uh, setting and looks to um, 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 uh, uh, employ some of that because that presidency we have in our country, this is my last point, that presidency we have is the most powerful position in the world, in the world. It's even more powerful than the United States president. Why? Because this president, the president of Liberia, has the ability to appoint, to appoint over 70 positions that are key. And nowhere in the world are you going to move forward with that. If you get somebody who's not at the top that with a key competencies, or even if they're very smart, because power co corrupts. Absolute power is even worse. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So that and the, the president of Liberia appoint down to the principle of BWI. So that's, have nothing. that's a lot of appointments. So gentlemen, yeah. I think uh, we, we, we've covered 1, a lot. 1,000 appointments. We, 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 we've covered a lot. Let's come to the conclusion. We all agree that the system is not working. And uh, we have advanced various solutions and we kind of try to talk about the how. Where we disagree, I think, is uh, how do we go about it? Mr. Cooney, the people don't want to hear about conscientization. It reminds them of Bacchus Mafia and they don't like it. That's a joke. That the most sustainable, that, that the most secure, sustainable, uh, yeah. uh, result driven process. All uh, of right. are temporary. And, and I, I agree with you. I have, uh, I have even embarked upon the process of uh, civic education. That's how I came up with this book. So that's a, that's a good thing. I always believe that uh, people should just uh, maybe learn on their own or do online education. I don't know where he's coming from with that one. I do. I said do universities and community colleges. You know, they are there. Yeah, they go there. We got, we got where? Where in Liberia? Come on, the university that have twenty thousand people take the exam, they can't pass. You see Come that on, now? Yeah, <laughs> okay, Mr. Cohen, oh no, oh no, is that a fact or a fiction? No, is that you a said fact that twenty thousand. Yes, okay. the, the, the statement is factually correct. There are universities okay. in Liberia. No, there's the not quality. Not no, 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 no. 
Okay, no, the problem is we don't have the quality, the funding to have now, quality now, university like now. Now. Now, 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 what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what when I look at university like you are saying, but there are universities and colleges. Okay, okay, you you have to your political people. Okay, okay, your political people. When you say university, university like abroad does not qualify as a university when you look at university in the sense of university in the world. Okay? I disagree. Don't qualify what you mean. I disagree. What I mean is the standard of university, the time, See, magazine, now rent. Now oh, standard, listen now. But it's qualified okay, as a okay, university. Yeah, yeah. It, it qualifies as a university. Then why many times people graduate from university when you come to America, they still send you back. Why they don't accept your credit? I mean, I want to school with people who graduate from me back. That one okay. No, 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 we can have that wait, discussion. Wait, wait, but wait, wait. You know Alex, the point I'm trying to Alex, say. The Alex, point I'm trying I hear to say, what so you are saying. You're interrupting Alex, me. Let me, no let me finish my point. If, if you're going to no if you're fairness, gonna ask me a question, no, if you're going to no, ask no, me a no, question, no. then it's fair that let me finish my point on what I'm saying. Then you can ask a question. Finish okay? your question. What, what, what am I saying? Can I ask the question of should people be, you know, singing munya and educating people and doing solo education and propaganda? to develop a country, to change a country? My answer is no. You build institution where it's not dependent upon what one person is going to promote or promulgate. The instant, when you have a university, the idea of a university, why, why, why professors are protected, the jobs are protected, because you're going to get different views. You can have an atheist professor, you can have a Christian professor. So when you talk about university, where the president appoints the president of the university, everybody else, so how are you going to discuss political science in our university when the whole university president and staff are cowards to the president of the country? You can't have that university in Liberia. They will shut it down. Right. In fact, just December, they shut down the, the schools in Liberia. Why? They can't pay them. And because the students are going out and, 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 and trying to protest to go to school. So that's the point I'm making. Institution, let's stop this individual thing and this superhuman being thing. Build schools, build colleges, build hospitals. Thank, thank, thank you. We, we, I, I want us to, uh, I want us to conclude. Yeah. So can I come in, Dennis? Uh, one minute. One minute to conclude. Alex, <laughs> about almost four minutes. Or one minute to conclude. <laughs> okay, uh, no, you're not concluding. The one minute I thought you wanted to answer. Oh, you're going in circles. That's the thing. You're going in circles. <laughs> I, I, okay, 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 no, I, will get, I will get it one minute. Easy, look, I listen to brother Alex. He's making the eloquent point, but you see, the argument, the argument has defeated the conclusion that we reach. He's saying people should build this, people should do that, people should do this. We've already said the system is rotten. The system can't do it. So who's going to be building these things? It is the system we're trying to fix. It is the, who we're building. That I said, we have right now. take down the president. Listen, listen to what I say again. I don't want to say my, 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 my solution. You take the president, vice president off. You save $20 million a year or more than that. You take that money, you divide it by the 15 counties. Now, the 15 counties every year, listen, hold on now. We, you, me, Kula, Dennis, we jump in the street just the way our Henry Carter is jumping in the street and, and protesting <laughs> for the wrong thing. Hold on now. Every character can protest for the wrong thing and y'all can jump behind him. For the thing that's supposed to give your children food and education and health care, you're asking who's going to do it. Why can the Eric Carter can protest for, for university? Can you give me one more minute? LS that gave three minutes. Ellis is talking exactly the same thing I'm saying. Who's supposed to do it? We. We're supposed to be aware. We're supposed to create the awareness. We're supposed to educate the people what these things mean. We're supposed to give them consciousness on what these things mean. So I don't know why you're opposed to it. But we've already done that. We just need to take the action now. We've already done that. The, people already know that you don't need a president and a vice president. No, no, the economic facts are there. People don't know that. You are assuming they, they, well, they don't well, know that. Well, you heard that. And what you did, you ignore that. And you go back where you say, we want somebody to watch it. <laughs> right? And what did it say? And, and, and Dr. Kula, Dr. Kula said, we got to have the boss there. So but they watch right. it. Okay. Right. Okay, but, then, but then why am I going to waste my time Telling people who their lives are suffering and telling you, yes, the way to improve your life. Yes, the way to educate your country. Yes, the way to know. get jobs. You said no. I did. I don't know. You guys said who are the educators. You say you want somebody. You want the, the big man. Then what the people back who don't have education would say? 
Y'all should be the one to say yes. Why have president taking almost 10% of the budget where that money can go into schools? Uh, all right. I'm not, I'm not depending on the people in Africa. I'm depending on you guys. But you Alex, guys, this is me all the time. Alex, Alex, all right. Okay. Now. Alex. Alex. No, yes, sir. Hold on. 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 We have. Yeah, we have we gotta to, do this again. We have. We gotta have to, do this again. We have. We have to. We have to conclude on the solutions. Okay. We are. We are uh, and one of the things that LA that I disagree is, or uh, you say people already don't know, the the average that I've that are watching, the average people watching this program now, is a uh, sixty. Okay? okay. The people are not attracted to even these discussions. If we were having discussion about, you know. Maybe what what the uh, what the tip what the next thing or what the guy name Moba Molo gonna say <laughs> or something dramatic? Yes, people will be here. So education is key. I don't know why you're downplaying that. And education does not have to take the form of uh, one person going to say it. What we are doing now is education. My so point. I don't, th I don't think uh, there is any. That, but that's my point. <laughs> but then we will be here. Dennis. Yeah, so let, let's let's conclude on this thing. We started with Mr. Dr. Kula. No, let me just say something before we, before I conclude. The thousands that are not watching here, but they're watching my Waco Gilman or uh, Prophet Key or whoever, right? Those thousands are supposedly being educated, but educated in one way, one position, and all of them following that position. None of them saying something different. Everybody's singing the same song. You see, you see where, where the problem lies? Mm -hmm. That's where the problem lies. And I think that's what Alex is saying. Let's educate our people, have a decent education where they can make those decisions by being critical thinkers. Because somebody's mm -hmm. supposed to be able to question uh, my why Michael Gilman or, or Costa, whoever is saying, dude, you said this, but I think this is, this, this is the way we should look at it. You mm -hmm. see, that's the problem we have in our country. Everybody's singing the same song, depending on who they're following. We can't have that. But the bottom line is education is needed. So. <laughs> We're not gonna buy a book, get it? Okay. <laughs> We're not gonna buy a book, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so you're telling me, book. Then is I want to educate you. Then is I want to educate you. Then I want to educate you. Not to raise your hand. Get it? Raise hand. My hand be awful. No, no, but, but you know you intrude us, so we don't gonna give you all the time that. Oh, you right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, 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 get it? When we, when we fund the university or the county, they will put your book there. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to send that book. <laughs> All right. So okay. well, let's go around the room and then get your 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 <laughs> Mele, the solution, uh, and how are we going to do it? Let me start with uh, Mr. King, William King. You say your hand back up. So two minutes. Yeah. Um. You know, I think that that as a whole, we criticize our leaders from the past too much to the point where we are not willing to learn from what they, they their mistakes and what their, the things that did that work and how we can build on some of this stuff. And I think we need to really assess that. The other thing that I think is very, very critical is that uh, we talk about implementing and doing a lot of things in Liberia. And one thing I want people to keep in mind is where are you going to get the finances from? Because no one does something for free. A doctor may come and may volunteer maybe for a couple of months, but the nurses, the folks who are there, they, they need to get paid. I was around when Sir Leaf, President Sir Leaf went around and opening schools all over. Even my great, great grandfather opened up the Booker T. Washington school, okay? And one thing, and, and that's right outside Kakatown. One thing you have to realize is that it takes money and resources to run certain things. And for us Liberians, I think that all of those plans are good, but please keep in mind that we need to get into capital and Liberians needs to put money in. And if we can't do that, none of these plans are gonna work. It's like the great car in the garage, the Rolls Royce of ideas, but you have no fuel. That's it. Was that two minutes or less? No, but, but what's the fuel? How do we get that fuel now you're talking about? Well, I said, I said we need money. Where, where are you going to get it from? Well, that's for no, another discussion. Join us on our economic I already said where to get it, money for. 
Okay. William, okay. get it for the presidency, Alice, please. Alice, Alice, that's your two minutes. Go ahead. Okay, William. Yes, we have appreciated the past president. As a matter of fact, we named buildings, streets, offices. Okay, most of these past presidents acquired land for nothing, acres and acres of land from what? Barclay Town. Okay, so I think we've given them more than they've given us. So just on our topic, uh, we need to look at the future because our past, whatever they've done, they benefited from it. They were paid for the job they did, and we still honor them today. Uh, look at uh, William B.S. Totmore, Totmore High, all these things. So that's the way you honor people. Um, but look, then it's just my two minutes. I just want to say I already had a good time. And, uh, you know, this was one of the most, uh, I would say, insightful and, 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 and beautiful discussion because it, I, I already tested. And I like that. And I hope we come back again with the same crew on a regular basis so we can continue to conscientize our people. I guess from a brother for from a brother point of view, where it would just be Dennis or Mr. Cody or whoever. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So I learned a new word. Mr. Fala. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. John. Let me say thank you to the panelists and uh we had, well, we're having good time here. And uh, <laughs> like Alex said, we hope that you will call us again sometime in the not too long distant future to discuss uh, issues affecting our common patrimony, which is Liberia. Yeah. And, but let me close on this. <clears throat> we have to be very grateful to those who fought for what we continue to enjoy today. We must be grateful to our revolutionaries for what they did. Because like I said, Efala, the youngest commissioner ever in the history of the Ministry of Finance, ever. <laughs> Could not have happened if Bacchus, Matthew, and others, Dr. Famula, Emma Sawyer, Deacon Kala, and many others. And many of those who have gone before us, and hopefully that, uh, they are in good hands. So we have to be very grateful to them. Let me just say this, today we are here with Mr. Aja, and if Mr. Aja falters tomorrow, should we condemn him? Oh, you are never good. Man, the forum will buy you a bag. No, we won't do that. We should look at some of the good that Mr. Uh, Mr. Aja uh, has done for us. So let us always be grateful to, to those who have come in our lives. You know, people don't meet by accident. There must be a reason for which people meet. So there's a reason that uh, Bacchus and others came to Liberia and became Liberian, that God brought them to Liberia. So that today that you and I, Alex, Kula, and Kuni can say yes, and that, 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 that Director Kuni have become the uh, director of CRD, <laughs> Public of Liberia, Kuni, the name Kuni to be CRD. <laughs> So we must be grateful to, 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 uh, to those uh, revolutionaries for all that they did. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, few comments here because it's, they call a few names here, so I want to read them. <laughs> Louis Dwight said, I think Ellis Jones came to America when he was five years old. So most of his <laughs> and, and she's telling you us. <laughs> You need to go to Liberia with all these ideas and put them into practice. Uh, uh, Louis, oh, that Louis Joa, oh, that's a he. Louis Joa is also saying to you, Mr. Dr. Kula, why are you, why you keep talking about why Michael Gilman? And uh, Judge to because, said- because, with, because why Michael Gilman is one of those who thinks he's conscientizing, but he's propagandizing and uh, it's dangerous for our country. Judge, George Toto said, with all the numerous universities in America, they still have institutions, organizations that educate and create awareness to people about mm -hmm. economic and social issues, conscientize. So let yep. me, uh, on, on that, let me go to Mr. Dr. Dr. Kula on your final comments. I think the debate was very, very healthy, and that's what a debate is, a give and take. Um, give a counterpoint to any point that's made and see how 
we can come up with some solutions here. Now, regarding this issue about the governance of our country and decentralizing, I think we need to really take it serious and look into making sure that our institutions, especially our good governance institutions and our integrity institutions are left intact. Right now, as we speak, the present government is destroying our integrity institutions. So everybody needs to have a concerted effort in making sure that we keep those intact. The other thing is, I think education, like Alex said, our, our system of education is very weak. Our kids need to be educated on analytical reading and reasoning where they're able to analyze things for themselves. And I think if we build up a strong system from primary education all the way up, our people can then make decisions for themselves. So even if, like Mr. Cooney says, he comes with his political action committee and he comes to conscientize our people as he's <laughs> speaking to them and educating them and conscientizing them, somebody will have an antenna go up and say, uh-oh, that sounds like propaganda to me. Another person might have an antenna go up and say, this part of it sounds like a good education that our people in this particular area of our country could use or our market women could use. But the reality is, and the bottom line is, that once our people have the tools, <clears throat> they can then make their decisions on their own and they can analyze people like why Michael Gilman. And I'll keep on raising him out every time I come to these debates. And I've challenged him to come and debate me, but he's refused to debate me. They will never uh, come. These are the, the people that are putting our propaganda out there. They have a following and everybody has this group think where they follow it, follow the leader and they think the same way and we're not having real dialogue back and forth, honest discussions to better our country. So that's what this is all about. Thank we're you. Gonna, we're gonna work on that debate with you and Dr. and uh, Mr. Gilman. So just stay put. We, we, we're working and please on get me a debate. Please get me a debate with Cummins because he seems to be the guy everybody thinks has all the solutions to Liberia. So I challenge you on this or any show to say to him, that he does not, he has not provided that one ant of solution to Liberia. Your, your two minutes have been over. Let me go to uh, Mr. Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, had to skip that one. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> uh, you got to sneak in. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Dennis, it's difficult to be the last, but I think, like everyone said, the discussion here has been very, very fruitful. I think we've all considered that the system that continue to produce our leaders, the system is broken, the system is wrong. Dr. Kula and I, we agree that we have to change the predatory, highly centralized government that is based in Monrovia, return power to the people, return political power, return financial power to the people, return accountability to the people. It is impossible for a president to sit down in Monrovia and supervise a superintendent in Maryland County. Mm -hmm. So I think we have that basic agreement. Uh, I think where maybe the sparring was tonight is the how. I do believe that uh, the path to progress in any society comes with education. And we're not just talking about classroom education. We're talking about that basic awareness of people knowing where they are and taking decisions that will change their lives. And I've given many examples here. We're not talking about indoctrination. Or, or, brainwashing. or brainwashing. When Susuku was initiated, those who were in the Susuku project, they learned about agriculture, how they could take, take care of themselves. We enjoyed voting with our property clause through education. It was not indoctrination. And I do agree with Dr. Kula. In this process, there will be other people that will be spewing propaganda. But again, this is why I have my confidence in the Liberian people. The Liberian people will know the difference between a ballot driven advocacy and an actual national driven advocacy. Uh, civil education, civic education in every society is important. It's happening right here in America. We need to tell the people what it means to be a voter and why they're voting, not necessarily who they should vote for. Basically what I'm saying, generations before us, they, they, they met the, 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 the tax of their generation. 
Their call was to create a multi-party democratic system. When you are a two minutes, get it over. Our, our responsibility is to make that democracy qualitative. Mm -hmm. And this is where LEPA is coming in. The way we do that is to educate, to create awareness, to inform our people, to organize our people politically for national driven objectives, not belly driven, short term, 911 objectives. Thank you. Thank you. You know, enter back. So. I mean, declare my candidate say I'm a, I'm an independent <laughs> candidate in 2023. I'm glad Ellis agree. At least he used my functional transition word tonight. I did. And, that and that, and that Dr. is for Taylor <laughs> That and is for Taylor Tassie. And Dr. Kula, Dr. Kula used the education in a partial way, even though he say university and other things, but we're getting that small, small. The other people that are in university, they need to be educated too. All right. So I'm glad. <laughs> Thank, thank you, uh, I must admit that I'm, I'm having the best time of my life. <laughs> All of you remember, uh, I used to be a very, you know, writing and criticizing and everything. I think I've <laughs> argued with Dr. Kula, Mr. Cooney, Mr. Fala on the list of, and talking back and forth on politics. But this time is the best time of my life uh, because I enjoy what I'm doing now. I enjoy uh, getting the views of people on how we can improve the country. Because in my view, after criticizing the Ellen Salif government for 10 years, in my view, I say I was teaching calculus to sixth graders. So I needed to take a back, you know, back seat and go the education anchor. And that's why we are doing here tonight on Focus on Liberia. So I want to appreciate you guys so very much for, for the ideas that we are putting forward. Um, we have the average of 60 persons watching and thousand others gonna watch the video later. And even on YouTube, please go there and watch it so that this kind of thing continues because discussion like this is not heard anywhere in Liberia, except maybe, you know, a tire shop where things are not documented for the next generation. But this is a recording that's gonna be there forever, hopefully as long as YouTube uh, and uh, electronic media, social media last. So I appreciate it time we have discussed extensively on the solutions. We all realize that things are broken and we cannot continue to put that transformer in that same socket and it keep blowing up and we keep thinking the transformer is the problem. The place we are putting the transformer, that's why it's causing the issue, okay? I have a, a information system background where we always want to customize. There are certain things that cannot fit our librarian setting our culture, our upbringing, everything else. So forget American democracy, forget democracy here and there. We can customize something for ourselves that fit our lifestyle, what we want to achieve, what we want to accomplish, and we move forward with it. Who said we can be the first to do these things? And you guys have helped to uh, generate that discussion. I don't want the discussion to end here tonight, but let it continue. As you go, talk about it, share the video, and hopefully we come back and continue the discussion, not just on the political system. We didn't even touch economic to see how we can, and we believe that uh, when we fix these things, maybe get rid of the presidency as LA said, or decentralize as uh, Mr. Cooney and Dr. Kula said, or make the legislature uh, part-timers, um, the legislators become part-timer, maybe uh, this economic issue will be resolved. But it is very clear that things are not working. And every time going in the street or every time changing the leaders is not helping or looking forward to a leader who's going to deliver us, that has not worked for us. The system and the structure within which we're all working is broken and that needs to be fixed. Tomorrow, we're going to come your way again with the Business and Economic Forum. And our Sunday focus on Libra will have a year end show. All of our hosts, our co hosts, our panelists, everybody, we're going to be in one place to talk, to, you know, review the year, talk about what we did best, and also look, look at our next year and see what is on the horizon. Again, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for your time. Keep uh, supporting Focus on Libra. Go on YouTube, subscribe to our video, share, and tell somebody about us. We are going into a brand new year. We need all your support. We want to thank you for your continual support. And we will keep counting on you to do the best. Thank you.
Love you.